Hi, I'm Chris Stevenson, and welcome to Inside View, a program in Calaveras County about uh, the things and the people that are important to our community. And uh, I would like to start off today by saying that Mel Nelson Mandela once said that education is the most important weapon you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela, of course, had a very important role in the, you know, in the history of South Africa, but education, that's the point, is extremely important. And we tend to think of teachers as the biggest weapon in, in the arsenal that we have, but administrators are extremely important as well. And we have an interesting administrator from Calaveras County with us today. His name is Jared Hungerford, and he is the 2021 Association of California School Administrators Adult Education Administrator of the Year. So this is Jared Hungerford. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. How'd you get into being an administrator? Did you, did you start off as a teacher? I did, actually. Uh, I was a teacher at my alma mater, Lincoln High School in um, Stockton, California, for seven years before I transitioned into administration. So what, So tell me about the, the award. Administrator of a spe, uh, Adult Education Administrator of the Year. Who nominated you? Uh, the, the individual who nominated me is um, my supervisor, Assistant Superintendent Karen Vale. Um, she's the Assistant Superintendent of uh, Educational Services at the Calaveras County Office. So, why did she nominate you? What is it? Now, you, you get to toot your own horn here for just <laughs> a second. What is it about Jared that made your, uh, your, what, your boss, did you say, mm -hmm. nominate you? Well, I, th I think I had a, a really good opportunity coming in. Adult education in Calaveras County had disappeared during a time when the budget was really tight in California, and um, Governor Brown created what was called um, flexibility uh, among the different educational programs. So schools and districts were free to use money from different categorical programs to support programs that they weren't able to use that money for before. So adult education um, was perhaps um, rightly not prioritized over K-12 education and so adult education uh, disappeared in the county. Well, that happened in lots of places and for that reason the state legislature passed a bill bringing it back as a categorical program so that funds would be offered to districts and to county offices to support adult education programs and that money would be protected. So when that happened, Calaveras County was able to bring its adult ed program back and I moved into my role as the administrator of that program one year after that happened. So I came in on the, the ground floor, so to speak, and I was able to grow the program, add to the program, um, and just see it transform um, and uh, earn WASC accreditation uh, and um, support just its, its its growth and evolution over the last four years. Okay, when I used to live in Florida, in the Orlando area, and we would get in the mail on occasion a uh, a brochure, and in this brochure was this amazing list of adult education courses that you could take, and it was everything. I mean, it was everything. It was from golf to yoga to piano and guitar or computer programming or whatever it might be. But of course there were serious things too, but you know, like computer training to train people into new roles and new positions, new mm -hmm. careers and vocations. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about here? Or are you talking more about the, the, like the basics of like basic literacy and getting your GED? Tell me yeah, more about what's involved. Yeah, that's a fantastic what, question. Really good question. Um, it, in our county, it's, it's mostly, it's the basics, it's two, two things. It's earning a high school diploma, and it's English as a second language. So we have a high school diploma completion program for folks that did not earn their high school diploma. And it's a one-on-one -on -one program, it's very flexible. They work with, with our teacher for an hour or two a week, and then the rest of the work that they do is independent. We provide them with online curriculum uh, that is standards-based and um, enables them to, in their own time span, complete their requirements and earn their diploma. Another important part of that program is helping folks to transition to whatever's coming next for them after earning their high school diploma. So with every student, we talk about 
their desire to either move into college classes at Columbia or Delta or to, uh, to job training. We connect people a lot with mother load um, job training. And um, we also help folks if they're interested in looking into the military or um, other uh, training programs. Okay. So you, you got some people's attention here when you said that uh, you helped them to graduate from high school, get their diploma. All right, if somebody wants to do that, you've got their attention. What's your phone number or website? How should they contact you? Right, um, so they can call us at 736-6046, uh, uh, 6046, or they can go to our website if they just Google Calaveras County Office of Education. Uh, we are under the, the schools and programs, adult education, and folks can actually register for either our uh, adult ed high school diploma program or our English as a second language program right there on the website. What's the cost? There is no cost. No cost? Yeah. It's <laughs> 100% free. So no, it is a state funded program. It's a, a budget line in the California state budget and so it is taxpayer paid. Sweet. How many people do you have now in the, in the programs? We have approximately 45 adults in our high school diploma completion program, and we have about 10 students in our English as a second language program. Okay, now you said you have 45 students and it's a one-on-one -on -one program. So how, you, do you use volunteers or are there paid instructors? And how many of those do you have? We have, we have one full-time instructor, one full-time teacher, and then I support the program as well. Um, so it's it's just the two of us in terms of instruction. Yeah. Yeah. So you do all forty-five. And, yes. And do you, English is a second language. You're talking about people that where maybe Spanish is their first language and they're trying to learn English. Yes. That, that's definitely. what we're talking about. How's your Spanish? Actually, my Spanish is is excellent. Really? Yeah. yeah Good yeah. job. I was a high school Spanish teacher for seven years when I started in education. So yeah, I lived, lived in Peru for a year, and so really, I speak I speak. Pretty good Spanish. <laughs> so, yeah, so you were a good fit for this job. All right. so, yeah. So tell me more about adult education. Sure. Um, so as far as the ESL uh, side is concerned, so I began an ESL program when I started with the county because I, I saw it as a, a possibility for growth. And our first step um, was to start an ESL class at Michelson Elementary in Murphy's. And it was a great little program where uh, parents would come and drop their kids off first thing in the morning at, at 8 and then they would go straight to a conference room there at the school and we'd have coffee and snacks and we would have conversational English and um, we got a, a nice little group of, of parents participating in that and so we duplicated that in the in January of 2020 um, in Valley Springs in the evening and we had an even larger group and then the pandemic hit. And so we, that was strong for a couple of months until everything came to a, a crashing halt. And um, we've been doing our ESL classes via Zoom. And it, it has not, unfortunately, been as successful. So we are definitely looking forward to the future and getting back into the elementary schools to attract the parents of, of our youngsters um, who come from second language homes and, uh, and get them um, back into their English studies. So other than the pandemic getting in the way, as it has for so many things, okay, what are the, the things that cause people not to take advantage of programs like this? Is it do rural people take advantage of these less? Is it older people? You know, um, I would say we try to remove all the barriers that we can uh, for people's participation in our programs. One unique thing about our program, being one-on-one, -on -one, is that we tend to meet people where they are. So again, prior to the pandemic, our instructor, our adult ed teacher, Jenny Haskell, would drive all over the county to meet people. So one day she might spend the majority of her time in the Valley Springs and San Andreas area, and then another day she may spend the majority of her time in the Murphy's and Angels Camp area, um, so we try to remove all of the barriers that rural life um, throws at us. And in, in this last year, that has included you know, providing laptops, providing hotspots for internet, 
Um, and so we, we try to troubleshoot that all the time, what we can do to ensure that people are able to participate. If you were to ask me what my barrier would be, it would be time. I don't have time for anything. <laughs> so is that something that you also see is it, the, the time issue? Absolutely. And how much time is required then for, it, say, for example, an ESL class? Well, the ESL class is, uh, it, it, that's an interesting question. We meet twice a week for an hour. So the in-class time, live time, is two hours. But they also have access to an online learning system, Burlington English. And so the time that they spend doing that, they can prepare for the classes that we have, and there are lessons for that that would probably take them an hour for each also. But then there are, are other methods in that online per learning program for them to move forward at their own pace also. So it, it really depends on the individual. And I would say that the same applies for our high school diploma program. And that's maybe another unique thing about our particular program is that we understand that every adult has a different, uh, different life and different demands in their life. And we don't want to limit participation by saying you need to do X number of hours per week. As long as a student is making progress, even if it's slow and steady progress, we will support that student and continue to provide them with the resources that they need to move forward, even if it is very slow. We've had some students that have taken multiple years, up to three years, to complete three or four classes. And, you know, we stick with them. Sometimes they drop away and they'll come back, but we stay in contact and continue to invite, and we've had a lot of, of success. Do you use volunteers? We haven't. We haven't yet. No. And, and, and credentialing is an issue. Um, so within within um, the California Adult Education Program through which we're funded, we do have certain requirements regarding uh, the credentialing of our teachers. We could potentially use volunteers in our ESL program to help supplement the, the, the conversational aspect of it. But in terms of teaching the high school diploma courses where we are awarding credit for uh, an accredited diploma, we need to use credentialed teachers. Okay. Is there any plan or thought or desire to expand beyond Spanish in, in, the, in the ESL program? Well, the ESL is, is for those who already speak Spanish who are learning English, but it's, it's actually not just for Spanish speakers. So I, I have two students from oh. Yemen in my ESL class, actually, who are from the San Andreas area. Um, so I have two Yemeni students, and then um, the rest are Spanish speakers. But I had a Polish student in the past as well. All right. So that was my small brain thinking that it could only be Spanish. But <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So yeah. excellent and good for them. So um, are there plans for any other classes other than the, the GED type program in the ESL? Um, Perhaps uh, we are interested, if, if we're able, in, in partnering um, locally to, to bring a, a CTE, Career Technical Education, course to the area, perhaps in the, in the medical field. Um, we need to determine the need and then um, determine the, the way in which we could provide the, the instruction and the, the credential needed um, for something like a, a certified nurse's assistant course or a phlebotomy course or something along those lines. Because we are such a small county population-wise, we do rely on our partners. So as an adult education organization, um, we belong to a larger consortium, two actually, and um, we therefore partner with larger adult schools and with Delta College and Columbia College and Modesto Junior College. So a lot of programs are available to people from Calaveras, but they would have to travel in order to participate in them. Although, right now, so much of it is online and may continue to be so. Yeah. And I understand that there, was, there used to be, anyway, a program from Delta College where people could take college classes in Angels Camp. Is that still happening? Uh, that actually was through Columbia College, but it, it's not happening currently, um, but it was happening as of the beginning of 2020. I but, think they finished it all through Zoom, um, but they were actually meeting at the Calaveras County Office of Education. At, at our office, we had a group of students, um, and they were on a, a live feed 
from Columbia College, and then there was also a group of st students in Amador who were also on that same live feed participating in the class. Yeah. So we in, in Calaveras County has no college or university, but it matters less now because of the availability of college classes that you can find online. So Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So you, you wear other hats as well. It's not just adult education, though. You are the adult education administrator of the year. Congratulations. <laughs> but Thank you. Tell me about your other hats. Uh, curriculum and instruction. Yeah, I, my official title is the Director of Curriculum and Instruction, and adult education falls under that. Um, but in addition to adult education, I work in a number of areas to support the, the districts and the schools in the K-12 districts and schools in our, in our county. Um, one of those areas that I'm most excited about right now is in the area of social-emotional learning. We recently received a grant from the state to support building a community of practice around social emotional learning, which is essentially gathering professionals from all of our schools and districts to form a common language around what is social emotional learning, how do we support students in their social and emotional growth, in their coping skills, in self-management, and self-regulation, and then um, work with them to implement those skills into their teaching. Not as another thing to add to their plate. I love the way it was said to me by a colleague, the social emotional learning isn't something that you add to the plate, it is the plate. It's the plate on which we put everything else. It's the way we, we, uh, we behave with our students, it's the perspective we have with them, it's how we teach them to be good, functioning, well-adjusted human beings. Wow, so you, like I said, you, you wear a number of hats. What does your day look like? What, well, that's walk a good me question. through that. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends on, on the day and the season of the year. Um, so right now, in addition to the social emotional learning uh, community of practice, um, this is what we call in education LCAP season. So the LCAP is the local control and accountability plan. It's required of every district in the state to write this plan uh, every three years and then to update it every year. One of my roles is to review that plan for the district. So those are, those are coming in right now for review. So I'm doing a lot of, of reviewing those plans, uh, providing feedback, um, and in addition to that, I'm pr preparing for the English language proficiency assessment that we have to give to second language students at the end of the year. I'll be administering that for, for some of our schools. Uh, and then I am, am also wrapping up the California School Leadership Academy uh, for, for this year, which is a, another responsibility I have that covers not only Calaveras County, but um, I recruit and support for that leadership program for Alpine, Amador, Calaveras, and Tuolumne counties. So I'm having trouble wrapping my head around all of the things that you do. I think perhaps maybe you need a raise. <laughs> no, no. I would have guessed that your role would have been more uh, in instruction and curriculum about exactly how to teach certain subjects, but it's, it's more encompassing than that. You're looking at the big picture as well, but do you sometimes also get down to the minutia? Like how do you teach you know, a particular subject in science or sex education or something like that in, in the schools? Um, at times, we usually, you know, being a small county office of education, we don't have specialists in every subject area. We just don't have the capacity. So what we tend to do is we steer schools and individuals at schools to the larger county offices of education. We partner a lot with the San Joaquin County Office of Ed and the Stanislaus County Office of Ed. And so we can help to steer them to professional development opportunities that are specific to the teaching of mathematics, for example, or are specific to the, the new um, science standards, our next generation science standards. And, and we've done that. Um, we've helped um, districts to, to find and, and to line that up. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned health education, and uh, that is something actually that we've just recently set a date partnering with Tuolumne County Office of Education to provide um, and update training on that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much 
misinformation that's promulgated by the, you know, like social media and such. Mm -hmm. Is this an area that our kids need to be educated in and how to recognize and deal with uh, fake news, misinformation mm -hmm. that's out there? Is this something that our school systems are looking at or have already implemented? Yeah, I think that's a wonderful question. I definitely believe that it's something that our students need to be educated in. And, and I do know that some schools are, and there are standards for technology use, and those include developing that ability to tell the difference between an authoritative source and a non-authoritative source. So um, I think the awareness is out there. The extent in, in each of our different districts to which it's happening, I, I can't speak to, but um, I, I think it is on a lot of people's minds. My wife is the, um, the library media specialist at Avery Middle School, and she has taught lessons and done activities on this exact subject. Um, so I know it is, it's definitely on people's minds, and um, I would be surprised if, um, if all of our schools weren't to some extent addressing it. That's good to hear. Yeah. How, how is the school system addressing the problem with school shootings? Hmm. Another great question. So Maybe not exactly in your wheelhouse, but you're as close as I'm yeah, right now. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And, and I was the, the principal at, up at Avery Middle School for three years. Um, that's what brought me to the area, actually, from Stockton. And so at, when I was a principal before moving to the county office of Ed, we, um, we had a, a school safety plan. We had a, a active shooting drills regularly. We had partnerships with um, the, with the sheriff's office and the California Highway Patrol. They came for our active shooter drills and helped support us in that. Um, actually, the, the Evans Pass Fire District would come as well. So we had a lot of community support um, in, in staying prepared. So that's one side of it is if, God forbid, it should happen that we'd be prepared for it. The more important side probably, and this ties back into my talking about social-emotional learning, the more important part is knowing our kids, knowing what they're going through, what they're suffering, and being able to address their needs. Um, this is, of course, in the case of, of student shooters, you know, to try to address the mental health needs of students um, before a student reaches a boiling point. Um, in terms of safety from the outside, uh, like, you know, cameras, we have a sign-in process, um, uh, name tags, you know, we do everything I do, to, we, we do everything we can do to ensure that everyone on campus knows who belongs there and who does not. Good. What's the best part of your day? What, what makes Jared happy when you go to work? And I know we're always pulling out our hair for this, that, or the other little fire we have to put out, but uh, there's got to be some really great parts too. Tell me about that. Well, I love my work, but the first thing that popped into my mind is the people I work with. The Calaveras County Office of Education is, is a great place to work. I feel at home there when I'm working and I feel supported. And I think that the vast majority of people that work there feel that way, that they feel supported um, to do the best job that they can do. And I think that some of what I've been able to do with the adult education program and now with the social emotional learning community of practice uh, is because I've been empowered to do it. I've been, been given the resources and the leeway to, to follow my ideas, to follow my passions. Um, and so I think that's, that's the best part is just when I go to work, I feel um, like it's home and I feel supported. Good. What do you do outside of home? What, what gives you joy outside of work? Yeah, I have, I have uh, three wonderful children um, that I'm watching grow up up here in this beautiful place. So and they're, they're in the school that. system too, right? They are. I have one at Bret Hart and two um, in the Valcito schools. So one at uh, Hazel Fisher in Arnold and, and one at Avery Middle School. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we, we love the outdoors. We, we moved up here in part um, for that reason. My wife's from interior Alaska, and so... Um, 
moving to some place like this was was something that uh, that we could both agree on, <laughs> and uh, we, we love love living here and um, hiking and kayaking and fishing and yes. all that. So. Excellent. Do your kids are in school now. Are the schools open? The schools are open. Yeah, I'm very proud of that fact. Our, our schools in Calaveras County have been open to some form of in-person instruction since, I think all of them since sometime in October at the latest. My students in the Vallecito schools, uh, my children in the Vallecito schools were back in person in, I want to say mid-September. And um, my daughter since October at Bret Hart, it is a hybrid system, so they go two days a week and then two days off and everyone's distance learning one day. And I think a lot of Calaveras Unified is on a hybrid system as well like that. But kids get to go to school and they get to see peers and they get to relate to other human beings, that not just on a screen. And I think that that's hugely important, not only for their education, but for their... Uh, their well-being and their, their social their development. Social well-being, right. Yeah. Um, and one of the important parts of the, the social aspect of being a kid these days is sports and participation in extracurricular activities. Tell me, uh, how is the school system doing with that right now? Yeah, from, from what I know, uh, uh, and since I, I have a high schooler, but she's not involved in sports right now, from what I know, the high school has we have sports going on right now with the with the high school um i know that golf was taking place i believe um basketball soccer so the sports are are happening and coming back um in our community even little league my uh my son is just started a few weeks ago with little league and it, it's such a joy to be out there and see kids running around together again and to be able to to gather um you know outside safely but we're together. Excellent. So. so you came here today to tell people about adult education. So one more time, if somebody wants to contact you about the, the, the programs that you have, mm -hmm. how do they do that? The easiest way would be to go to our website. So go to Calaveras County Office of Education and um, go to programs, look up adult education. And on our website, you'll find phone numbers. You'll find a link to register for our programs. You can complete the registration form right there. All right. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Jared Hungerford. He is the 2021 Adult Education Administrator of the Year. So congratulations and thanks for coming in today. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. Thank you so much. Really? <laughs> so did I. I. I learned a lot. I appreciate okay. it. So thanks to Ed and Joni and Susan and all the crew. And, uh, and thanks to you for watching Inside View.